Hello everyone, it's Professor Rako here again. Uh, we're continuing our uh, lessons dealing with the income statement. Today we're going to focus on discontinued operations. So discontinued operation is one of these items that comes uh, at the bottom of your income statement and companies may or may not have discontinued operations. So let's just define it real quick. So uh, basically what, when you have discontinued operations, think of it as just a company is discontinuing part of their operations. So it says company eliminates the results of operations of a component of the business that represents a strategic shift and has a major effect of the company's operation. All right. So, I mean, for example, uh, think about Gap. Gap owns Gap, Old Navy, Banana Republic, uh, and then a few other things. If Gap decided to sell Old Navy, uh, that would be a discontinued operation. All right, that would be something they're breaking out. All right, so the reason that we break these out and show them separately on the income statement is because we want investors and potential investors and analysts to know that this is something that won't happen again next year. Meaning, if Gap sells Old Navy this year, they can't turn around and sell Old Navy next year. All right, and so we take the Old Navy portion of the income out and separate it. It's still on the income statement, but it's just in a separate component so that they know. Uh, what will be next year. Remember, we call that one section income from continuing operations, meaning we expect it to happen again next year. All right, so a couple key things here. Discontinued, discontinued operations are reported net of tax. All right, so we'll talk about how to do that. Uh, essentially, basically, you just multiply it times one minus the tax rate, but we'll get into that in a second. All right, so there's two components. There's the income or loss. So remember, let's think about the example I was using. Gap, let's say Gap sells Old Navy halfway through the year, all right? Well, Old Navy was operating either with income or a loss from the beginning of the year till the time of disposal. So we have to recognize that, all right? So we'd recognize the income if they uh, were turning a profit or a loss if they were operating at a loss. And then we also uh, have the gain or loss on the disposal of a segment. All right, so I'm going to write over here, I'm going to put always for this, meaning if we get rid of a portion, a, por a portion or a component of our business, it was operating up until the point we got rid of it. So there's going to be some sort of income or loss. All right, this right here is maybe, meaning if we sold it, we'd probably have a gain or a loss on the sale of that uh, segment. All right, if we just stopped using it, then it did not sell it. There would no, there would be no gain or loss. All right, so here's what the income statement would look. So if you're, you know, remember we did the income statement in the first video. We did the example from Home Depot. So go back and look at that if you need to. Uh, but, you know, on the Home Depot one, we had these, these items right here. Now, remember, there was no discontinued operations. So we called that net income on the Home Depot. One. However, since there is discontinued operations here, we call this income from continuing operations and then break out the discontinued operations separately, all right? So make sure you see that. Uh, income from continuing operations and net income can be the same number if there's no discontinued operations, all right? So if you look here, here are my two components, the income or loss on the discontinued operation and the gain or loss on disposal. Like I said, you will always have the first one. You might have the second. All right, those two numbers get netted together to give me a total discontinued operations. And now we have net income, all right? So we just, all we did is this part right here got added into our income statement. All right, so you can see here, it says showing the tax for continuing and discontinued operations is called intraperiod tax allocation. Doing this relates to tax expense to the specific items that give rise to the tax amount. So notice up here, this income tax number up here is based off this number right here. OK, which does not include our discontinued operations. So this income tax is on this income tax right here is on the continuing portion. And then we show these two numbers down here, net of their tax effect. All right. Notice I put here benefit. All right. So if it was a loss, uh, remember, loss is lower income. So we pay less taxes. So it'd be a tax benefit. All right. So let's talk about this net of tax real quick. All right, so there's two ways to compute a number net of income tax. The way I usually do it is multiply the number. Uh, I'm sorry, I usually do it the second way. There's one way to multiply the number by the tax rate to get what the tax would be and then subtract the tax from the original number. All right, the other method is to multiply the number by one minus the tax rate. All right, so let's just do a quick example here. If we have 80,000 of income from a discontinued operation and a tax rate of 30, the number net of tax would be what? All right, so. 
uh, if we take 80, if we do the first method, times 30%, all right, so 80 times 30, so it'll be 24,000, all right, so that's 24,000. If we then take 80 minus 24,000, that equals 56,000, all right, so that would be my answer, 56,000. If we do it the second way, we're taking 80,000 times 1 minus the tax rate, so basically 1 minus 0.3 or 0.7, so 8 times 7 is 56, so it'd be 56,000. All right, so I like doing it that way because it's just one less step. It saves me a little bit of time. However, you can see whichever way you're more comfortable with is going to give you the same answer. All right, so that was discontinued operations. So make sure, you, you know, a lot of students sometimes struggle with that, but, you know, the key thing is back up here is understand these two components of it right here and make sure you, you know, have a grasp of what that means and then how to calculate that number of net of tax. All right, so the next one we'll look at will be some a few more unusual items that you might have on your income statement, and then the one following that will just be an income statement example where we try to put uh, some of this stuff together. All right, so once again, I'm hoping you're enjoying these. Please stay tuned in uh, to the next one. Um, please feel free to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. Thank you.